do it. All right. Iron Law Podcast, LordsofGaming.net, Play NYC. Who is this fine gentleman in the realm today? I'm Andrew Lindy from Juncture Media. How are you doing? Doing fantastic. And Sav and I, we had our eye on this game right here. So we, tell us about, how do you pronounce it? Avaria? Yeah, you got it. Okay. Avaria Versus. Avaria so, Versus. Yeah, Avaria is the name of the planet. Okay. And this is our PvP game. Mm. So it's called Avaria Versus, yeah. So I'm getting Final Fantasy vibes right now. Yeah, All right. Exactly. So the first thing I wanted to ask you off top is that um, I'm noticing that style. You said PvP. So there are two modes? Like, break this whole thing down. So, Avaria Versus is a PvP game only, but we are also working on a story game. We wanted to start with which, with what we thought was new to the genre was, you know, Final Fantasy PvP, which is what we made here. So you can play online, you can play local, you can play versus bots. There's 16 heroes. Bots? Yeah, you can make over 2,000 different parties. So it's like totally customizable. And once you learn this battle system and the characters, we're gonna come out with a story game called Avaria Ghost of the Immortal. So once everybody's like a pro at the battle system, we're gonna throw a bunch of story challenges at you in a wow. separate game. Wow, this sounds pretty cool. One thing that I noticed is like, you don't really see a battle game in this vein, sort of the Final Fantasy, without it being resembling like an RTS, like a StarCraft or something like that. So where did you guys come up with this idea to sort of have it like a, this turn-based thing, but not grid-based? And then how, how did you balance that, that, that gameplay? Because that's got to be yeah. difficult. It was a big challenge, but I mean, we set off, like I grew up always wondering why can't I take my Final Fantasy VII party and battle against my friend? Woo! Like, Attic is loving this yeah, right now. Attic is loving it. Yeah, like that's what I wanted to do, and I never could. I'm like, we both have memory cards. <laughs> Shouldn't we be able to like stick them in and like just fight? So then, I, so we made that. And so, you know, when you play versus bots, there's no timer. But when you ever you're playing against a human, there's a timer going. So you gotta act fast. We call it ultra fast turn-based combat, and I think that's really what it feels like. Your your hands will get sweaty. So now you say timer, like how fast are we talking? That human decisions have to be made before the next action. So we base the timer on this fact: when you hit level five with a hero. By the way, the leveling system is like a MOBA. You level inside of the battle and you can level up to level nine. You get your ultimate ability at level five. We made the timer based upon how long it takes to do three ultimate abilities and three mini games. Because you get a mini game that's like random when you, when you trigger your alt to boost the effectiveness of it. So you can barely pull off three characters and three alts with the timer. That's what it's based on. It's right around like 25 seconds. So that, that's one thing, like you said the alt, so you, there's a mini game in between that. So it's not like you're just pulling moves off and they're affected by it and then they go. So that's great because it gives you even more like minute control of the battle as opposed to like I, I swiped you, whatever, you dodged it or anything like that. That's amazing, man, because it, you would think a lot of that stuff turns into kind of an auto battle. Like you, you attack them with something, then their turn comes. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, we just wanted to like, I, I always imagine this scenario where eventually people are going to be like, oh, this is the best party, right? Yeah. So what if you have two people playing the exact same party all the time? We needed that thing to make the difference. So there's dexterity elements that come in. For example, if you have two parties of the same, all the characters have the same speed stat, right? So who's gonna go first? first right. Whoever acts faster with that character. that character. So if I have a Dithor and you have a Dithor, if I input faster, mine's gonna go first, hit you, maybe kill you before you even get to act. So there's all these things layered in there that make it, you know, not just like an auto battle, like gotcha. you said. Let me ask you this question. Now, as far as characters, two questions. One, as far as the amount of characters that's selectable. And then the second, one thing Final Fantasy is kind of known for is like these summons and these kind of things. Do we have like these kind of big kind of like um, bombastic kind of powers kind of thing? Those are the ultimate abilities, which okay. are called focus burns. Okay. So they don't summon like a summon, right. but they, they're the biggest moves in the game. Everybody, every character has two different ones. So there's 16 heroes, and each hero has two archetypes that you can load them out in. So it's almost like there's 32 yeah, two, yeah, it's almost yeah. like an additional character. So. Yeah, so there's over 2,000 party combinations you can make. So instead of customizing at the character level, you customize at the team comp level. You know, so like that's kind of what you're thinking is, you know, I need like a DPS guy, I need like a utility guy and a healer. Or maybe you could kind of go all DPS and just hope that you can kill them before they get a chance to get their defenses up. Is each archetype completely different in terms of loadout, in terms of how the, the tree, the skill tree expands? So, so basically what the archetype changes is the, the build path of the abilities plus the ultimate and the item. 
So the ultimate and the item are completely different, but the three main abilities are the same, except they build completely different. So in one archetype, you might build to like really strong single target damage. The other one, it might build out to a party attack, like, you know, area of effect. So it really changes how you're going to play when you switch to archetype. Yeah, that's really cool, man. So currently right now, we are we currently out on Steam right now? It's out right Woo! now. Oh, we out of the store, baby. Right we in the yeah. store right there. Right awesome, man. So, um, again, out on Steam. Now, us, we're lords of a lot of console guys yeah. here. Is there a chance at any point this may come to console? There's a chance, but right now you can see we're playing on controller. So, I mean, you load it up on Steam. We, uh, we made this game for controller. I'm a console guy, too, but it's my first game, and I was like, Consoles are a way bigger, you know, approval process. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to get in over my head. Yeah. But we designed it with controller in mind. Nice. But of course, you can play it with mouse and keyboard too. Oh, that's awesome, man. Got my eye on it, man. Yeah, Any definitely. Other? One thing about, so being that this is just the versus portion of it, are you including like lore and stuff in it to sort of get people oh, yeah. invested in the characters? Yeah. Because you said there's, there's an act, there's a full on RPG coming afterwards. Yeah. So. There's a mini game. Yeah, what's the like mini game about? I was about to ask you. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be another one here. Let's try it. So, yeah. Chaos. So he's got to solve the puzzle, flip them all green with, before the time runs out, and he can boost it. Uh-oh. This one this one tricks people a lot. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. Green. Yeah, he failure. Got yeah. He got frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> no, so the thing is, with a minigame, you get the base effect just from triggering it. But if you complete the minigame, you get a boost. So that's how that works. Oh, okay. Kill. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's the big move. That was the big move. Okay, there we go. <laughs> all right, there we go. And we got, again, online. But now, is there... Um, I was gonna say it's not like couch co-op battle. Yeah, no, you can do you can do versus uh, split screen. So, oh like, wow, nice, nice, nice. And go to split screen. Mm. Wow, so, so we got bots, yeah. we got local split screen, we got online. Yeah. Okay. It's controller. It's controller. So, and, yeah. Oh, that's awesome, so bro. You can do private match online. You mm. can do matchmaking online. Awesome. You can do local versus bots or local awesome. split screen. So Dude. I mean. Even if there isn't a lot of players online, you can always you can always play one way or another. We have a, a pretty active Discord, discord.gg slash Avaria. Okay. So that's going to be for both games, but right now this is the only one that's out. You know. So, so. right now, again, multiplayer components yeah. out. Yeah. And as far as how long down the window before we get that, maybe that single player story cinematic kind of experience? I'd love to be able to put a demo out there in the next 12 months. That's like the goal, okay. but you know, nothing like announced yet. Right, right. So yeah. we're still working, we're still yeah. working. We have a really good demo right now. I'm just we're putting some final tweaks on it, you know, talking to some publishers, trying to get it lined up. No yeah. doubt. You heard it here first, man. Avarius looking good. So looking what you think, good. man? No, I, what I love is that this shows like this give devs the opportunity to do something different. Yeah. We have not seen this type of battler mm -hmm. that's not an RTS. Yes. Yeah. You don't see that. So amazing work, man. Yeah, amazing. Man. Very excited. Look, looking forward to it, man. Absolute pleasure. You saw it here first, man. Avarius, check it out, y'all. Lords of Gaming got the eye on it.